Hey everybody, and welcome back to the BioLabs Motion Control Series. My name is Chris Field, and today we're talking about Dragon Frame. Sounds badass, right? Dragon Frame. Well, so what the hell is it? You might have heard of it before, but what is it? How does it work? Is, is this something worth looking into? Is this something you need? Well, you know, when I first started, those are a lot of questions that I had as well. After releasing Carnivora Gardenium, which is linked here, I had a lot of frustrations with failed shoots, and it took a while to shoot a plant. And, you know, they never behave. Like puppies and children, but worse. Shooting flowers is one thing. You park a camera in front of it, you're good. But moving plants is a whole other ball game. Either it grows in the wrong direction, and it lands out of frame, or moves out of focus. And I needed a way to interact with the plants back. And all back then, all I had was my home-built rails, and nothing really fancy. And I had my own chrono controllers which i built and designed to do this kind of filming and i gave them the ability to do what i called live ramping and that's basically the ability to tweak the intervals between the shots and increase and decrease the moves of each motor but everyone had to be done individually and it was really hard to kind of coordinate it so it was, there was a lot of guesswork um, but you could you could tweak the pan a little bit or the tilt a little here and try and do it problem is controlling more than a couple of time was incredibly difficult I knew I needed a better workflow. So I'd heard about this program called Dragon Frame, right? Now this is stop motion animation software and uh, it can be adapted to use for time lapse as well. I started looking into it and quickly realized this actually had everything that I needed and that I wanted. I was also in the currently in design of uh, designing auto. That's my first uh, large multi-axis camera rig. And after digging into it, this is clearly the way to do it. So like I said, Stop uh, Dragon Frame is stop motion animation software. Um, it works as its own virtual studio. It, it does everything, even renders the footage. All you need is a camera, tripod, laptop, software to make films. In the past 10 years, tons of films were made with this, like uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, Isle of Dogs, Shaun of the Sheep. Um, there's a ton, of, a ton of stop motion that have been done through it. And there's a lot of parallels between what I'm doing in stop motion. I'm, mostly, I'm still building the sets and tending the things. I'm just replacing the puppets with plants. So this entire series is going to be time-lapse centric rather than stop motion. But for anyone doing stop motion, the motion control aspect of this is going to be very beneficial. The integration of Dragon Frame was uh, very challenging. There were a lot of tutorials on the stop mo side and how to use it, but not really that explained it. How do you get how do you get everything to work together? And it's a big, heavy do-it-yourself requirement. Luckily, these days, there are a lot of motion control kits that'll work right out the box at Dragon Frame. Um, and that takes a lot of the guesswork out, but you're still only limited to three to four axis systems. If you really want to get something truly special with the motion, you should probably look into building a, a, a complete camera freedom rig. Um, the big question I had at the beginning is, how does my computer move the motor, right? It seemed to be step one, buy Dragon Frame and robot parts. Step two, Step three, use robot. So there is actually several ways to do it. The first method is to buy the DMC-16, which is a signal generator for motors. And it also provides DMX control, limit switches, and it can, it's the bridge between the computer and the motors. It's also about $1,800, so it's not cheap. And still, from there, you got to build your own stepper driver box in order to power the motors. Um, another method to do is Adrenos. And they're little computers about the size of a deck of cards. And they're normally used for little automation projects and robotics and stuff. And Dragon Frames comes with a sketch that can be loaded on it. And then you can connect the computer to the Adreno by USB and then the Adreno to the motors or to the stepper drivers. Um, but that's still a lot of do-it-yourself stuff and you're limited to stop motion uh, or time lapse. Uh, the easiest way is just buy a rig that's already Dragon Frame compatible. Several brands already offer this, like Edelkrone. Uh, Ditto Gear, Slide Camera, my personal favorite, Emoto Mo, because it's the only one of those that actually works with the real time abilities of Dragon Frame. So, and Dragon Frame integrates directly with the camera and it works with most modern USB uh, cameras, uh, DSLRs, and mirrorless cameras. And it controls everything from like sh shooting style, shutter speed, ISO, and it gives you a lot of crazy abilities to do different kinds of like uh, bracketing, indexing, and focus stacking and stuff. So, question is, do you need Dragon Frame? Well, if you're doing stop motion, I don't know a package that can even come close to the ability as Dragon Frame. And at 300 bucks a license, it is a steal for progressional grade studio software. It's none of that, none of that subscription crap. You buy it and you own it. As for time lapse, you might find that your time lapse kit already has a stop motion feature. And tethering your robot to a laptop while shooting the field might be more cumbersome than you really want. Uh, so for the casual time lapse, it may just add unnecessary complexity and no real benefit. But 
if you're the kind of person who really likes to dig in and just take things to another level and push those boundaries of what's possible and the amount of the amount of tricks that can be done in dragon frame is outstanding and i'm just scratching the surface i mean i've shot my subject in the background at two different completely different speeds using dragon frame i can film multiple plants on a set simultaneously by interlacing the moves or film the same plant and rack up 14 time lapses simultaneously to get as much content as possible at the same time. I successfully filmed orchids in 3D using Dragon Frame. But the most importantly, when filming plants, I can adapt and change the position, trajectory, and movement of the camera in real time to pull off dynamic moves that have never been possible before. There were no tutorials on how to do this. I had to figure it all out on my own. And the flexibility of this program, for those willing to learn it, is an entire sandbox of new possibilities. So we're going to be exploring how to integrate Dragon Frame, how to build the motor drivers, how to build the rigs, the robots. We're going to be going over all the different pages in Dragon Frame, how to set up multiple exposures, how to do indexing, bracketing, how to do focus stacking, uh, you name it. We're going to go over the keyframes, how to set up the motors the whole nine yards. So this is going to be a pretty comprehensive series. But like I said, we're not going to be talking about how to match up puppet mouths to the audio. That's uh, you should go with something a little bit more um, stu or stop motion centric for that. But when it comes to this one, we're going to go heavy into the motion control side. So if you're building a stop motion rig and you really want to learn how to use this, definitely uh, pay attention to this series. So what you should go ahead and do is if you if this is something that you think you're going to be interested in and you're excited about this idea and learning more about dragon frame from someone who uses it all the time um go ahead and hit that like and subscribe you know and share this videos to uh, out to hit as many people as you want anybody you think it might be interested and tune them into this because we're going to be going over this in incredible levels of depth and uh i'm going to answer those questions how do i connect the computer to the robot it, it seems like there's a lot, but I've done it a million times now. Um, we're also going to be using the Emotomo quite a bit with it for demonstrating real-time abilities. We're going to be playing around with the DMC-16. Uh, we're going to be doing it all. So make sure you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you are stoked on this. I'm really jazzed up to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time now. So um, thank you for joining, and uh, let's go ahead and get started.